Hello, hello, hello. Everyone who is listening, uh, we're going to start in a minute. It's going to be in English because we want to reach an audience. Um, I'm not sure what time that I told my friend in Holland, but I see I have four viewers. So that's good. Everyone who is watching, uh, put something in the chat for me, please. That would be great. Since this is the first stream, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay. So you guys are okay with the English? Because that way I can show uh, my boss at Code Wizards how this is working. Because he, he doesn't know Twitch yet. Sure, sure. That's good. That's good. Good to know. Okay. So this is Blender. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about Blender already. So this is uh, what it looks like when you start it up. You can download it for free at blender.org, as you can see in the bottom. So if you want to follow along, you should download it, install it. I'm not sure there's time for that now. I can give you a couple of minutes for that. In the meantime, let me show you around. So this is how it starts. If you click uh, somewhere outside this box, then uh, it'll go away. It's, it's handy though, because it shows your recent files you worked on. Uh, you can open, of course, a project that you did worked on before. Um, the rest I didn't use too much, to be fair. So usually I go to my recent files and I start working on, or continue working on something that I did before. So then I'm now going to just uh, click outside the box and that's, this is where you see, and it might be overwhelming. And it kind of is like, you know, when you step into a space shuttle while it's flying and you have to figure out how it's working because there's so many upper, uh, possibilities here. So many things to tweak around and to, to, to do. And, um, it's like incredible. Uh, so this is a box. You start with a cube. I'm using my middle mouse button. Um, I'm not sure if I can show you which. I'll just tell you which mouse button I'm pressing. So if I uh, keep pressing my middle mouse button and I scroll around and I can kind of circle around the object that is now centered pretty much. And I've changed my settings. So when I zoom in, I zoom in to, to the center of the screen. That's how I prefer it. And I also changed another setting that kind of selects stuff when I use my left mouse button. Usually it's the right mouse button for Blender, which is, I think, a bit weird, but you know, you can change that easily. So, okay. So first let me show you around what, what all this is. Um, so this is of course the, the, the main stage, but you can sh uh, change that around. If you're like, oh, I'm gonna do some modeling. Up here, there are starting from layout or modeling, sculpting, UV editing, texture paint, shading, animation, rendering, compositing, and scripting. If you click those tabs, then your screen will change like drastically. Uh, it might even split up. Um, you see colors changing, animation pops up, a timeline pops up at the bottom. Um, so that's for, of course, the, and you can even do scripting with Python right here, that's, which is which is great, which I haven't tried yet, by the way. So that's something new for me. Uh, but you could just, you know, keep things simple for now and just keep here on the layout tab. And that's complicated enough as it is. Um, okay, so before I continue, uh, could you guys give me some feedback in the chat, how the audio is and how uh, the, the visual is, how the screen is shared, if that's working for you guys? Screen is fine. Okay, audio, the voice, because last time I think I wasn't even, couldn't even be heard. So you guys can hear me. Okay, apparently, if, if not, you would not respond. Uh, so, okay, great. Uh, so, how many of you guys have uh, Blender installed? I also have... Uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, Discord open. So, if you want to type it in there, that's fine too. I'll type it in Dutch there. Okay. How much older? If it's be, uh, before 2.8, then it's going to be a bit different. Mm. 
Okay, so um, okay, okay. Then it's gonna be if if, if it's before two point eight, it's gonna be different. But you know, some things are the same. Like you start with a cube, you start with a camera, and you start with one light. That's pretty much what you got. And you already have uh, like let's say uh, a, a, a scene. So if you go up here to render, and you render the image, then this is what you got. And it's, yeah, it's super simple, but you could just export this and this is how you start. And the rest is up to you to create it into something more useful, let's say. You could even create uh, uh, an animation of a, a gray cube doing nothing. That's that's also totally possible, uh, which might be a bit boring. So maybe you don't want to do that. But um, that's really the basic setup. So this is the main screen. A lot of overwhelming stuff here, but uh, I'll take you through things one by one. So... Light, camera, cube. Now, the Blender has a steep learning curve, meaning that in the beginning you know nothing and it takes you forever to find out stuff. So I totally recommend watching YouTube tutorials because that will speed up your learning drastically. Um, okay, so this is the main screen. Um, these things here, when you hover over it, it kind of uh, explains itself. Rotate, scale, move. So. I don't use these guys too much because uh, it's far more faster to use the shortcut keys for that. So I use those, um, but they kind of, you know, speak for themselves. I think it's, it's not that hard really. Uh, this guy, the cursor might be a little bit, I don't know, um, not speaking for itself. So the cursor is really, if you add some stuff, let's say, this is the cursor now, I can uh, replace it by shift right click. So now it's there. And if I add stuff, if I go up here and add a mesh, let's say a cube, another cube, then it, that's where it will occur. So that's what the cursor is really, okay? So there you saw the first interaction with add. And as you can see, if you click one thing, there will be like a million. If you click one thing, there will be like a million other possibilities. And <laughs> that's really why it's a bit overwhelming. But if you just, Start simple, watch your tutorials, then you should be fine. Of course, this is the main screen. These are the main tools. Then here you got something super important because you will have objects in your stage. Let's say this is the stage uh, where this is the camera, this is the light, this is whatever you put in there, <coughs> like the object. And um, you can have multiple objects in there. So I can, the cursor is now here. I can add, uh, let's say, uh, a sphere. So now I got a sphere, roll of balletje. <laughs> in Dutch and, um, and a cube and I can add as much as I want. So I shift right click to move the cursor even further to the right. And I add, uh, let's say, uh, what's a cylinder maybe. And you can add stuff like that, you know, as much as you want. And these are objects, but you can also go in there and change the objects. And uh, let me show you what that means. So now I've got this cylinder um, select it and I can go from object mode to edit mode All right, and now I can kind of change that object before I couldn't because I just can move the objects around but now I've selected it I went into edit mode and now I can edit it makes sense right I mean come on it's not rocket science so far so now I could like for instance uh, select that's just you know as you think it would be like keep pressing the left mouse button and select um these points, let's say, points and lines I got selected. And now I can do all kinds of stuff with them. So now I can, I can do, you know, a ton of, and everything that's possible is right here, which is overwhelming. Again, it's like massive. I could scale this uh, like so, or so. And you can make every shape that you want pretty much. So usually what I do to keep things under control, like this is like visual, like, you know, you, you can see what you're doing here and maybe it doesn't matter how precise it is, but usually I use uh, the, the shortcut keys because I can be far more uh, precise. So I can do scale um, two and everything will be exactly twice the same size. So that's S for scale and then two and then enter. Very important that you press enter or else it might go back to uh, the state it was before. 
So this is like the beginning, uh, and 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 I I haven't even touched what's going on here on the right or these guys or up here or I mean there's so many possibilities, but you should just trying out this stuff, uh, yeah, could get you like days to to figure that out. So now I'm going back from edit mode to object mode, and now it's an object again, and I cannot change the appearance. I can just I can move it. So I can still click here and move it around. And even that, you know, usually I don't use these guys too much because they're, yeah, I don't know. They're not precise. So there's another way of moving stuff that's that's super important. And you should know that from, from scratch. And that is if you, there's a little, <laughs> it's really a little thing here that uh, it's up here somewhere. It's a little arrow. If you click it, then this pops up. And then you have a lot of information like data. And you can use this. And I'm press clicking with the left mouse button and, and kind of moving the mouse around. That's how you can move stuff. Or you can just type it in. You know, I can make it this zero. And it will go to, to zero in, in the Y coordinate because you have this line here. This is like, these are like coordinates. You got the red line, the green line. Uh, so the y, the the red line is the y coordinate and the green line is the x coordinate. And you can, you know, if I pre uh, z, try to imagine what happens if I make z uh, three. So before I do it, before I hit enter, just try to picture for yourself what you think will happen. And I will hit enter, and you'll see it moves up. That makes sense, right? That's the z coordinate. So x, y, and z is up and down. So if I want it under, that's also possible. I could type like a minus three, and that's how you position stuff. Okay. Now, this is all basic, and you should fool around with it just to get to know it. Um, it's not spectacular yet, I'd say. Um, you can get to spectacular things quite fast, actually. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to show off here. I just want to show you the, the basics. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I had a file somewhere saying what I was planning to teach you guys. So, okay, we got that, we got that. Okay. Now, another thing that's super easy is once you're in edit mode, and I can go to edit mode, mode by pressing tab. And, uh, well, let's go back to object mode and select the cube. So I'm, I'm going back to object mode, I'm clicking the cube. Now the cube is the focus. And you can kind of see that up here too. So this makes sense too, right? This is like a sum up of what we have on our stage. So we have a camera, we have a cube, we have a cylinder, we have a light, and we have a sphere. Um, so that's kind of an introduction to this guy up here. I'm not even touching this because this is f um, um, like, a, like a magic box of tools that you can add. It's like crazy, crazy stuff going on there. So um, the cube. I have selected. Now I'm going to edit mode, but just by pressing tab, uh, tapping tab, so on the keyboard, tab, T-A-B, tab. And um, now I'm editing this cube, and there's a ton of things I can do to it. That's like super in interesting. And one of the things that I used a lot is the extrude tool. So you can, uh, of course, move. You know, I showed you that already. You can also rotate uh, any way you want. Same goes here, you can press R and uh, 10, for instance, and it will rotate uh, like 10 degrees. And then you have to hit enter, don't forget that, or else it will go back to the way it was. Uh, you can also control that here, like, uh, let's say transform. And then I would have to go, let's see, that's a medium. I can do that, but that's a bit. Okay, I have to go back to object mode for that because it's now, okay, now this is the default. So this is gonna be pretty hard. If you do anything that you don't like, of course you can use control Z to go back. That's also important. So keep control press and then press the Z button and you'll be back where you were. Now I can, now this is interesting. I, I There's a way of making this default. I would have to look for that. How fast, I have no clue. There's still a ton of things that I have done once and I don't remember exactly what it was. So, okay, let's let's forget about this. Um, so, there we go. Now it's zero. Okay, great. So I can do a rotate like this 
using this guy. Or I can do something like 90. Oops. Wait a second. I can go in here and double click and then 90 degrees, hit enter. And that would rotate it also, 90 degrees. So you don't see that because it's a cube. So if you rotate it 19 degrees, uh, so 45 degrees would make a better impact, I guess. Is this working at all? Oh my gosh. What's happening here? Oh, nothing is... I'm totally rotating something else. Something else was selected. Sorry about that. Let, let's select the cube and then move this guy around. Okay. This makes sense. So minus... Minus 45. Enter. There we go. This is what I was trying to say. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I'll go back to zero degrees. So now it's in the, its original place. I'm going to move it out a bit. Back to edit mode using tab. And what I was just going to show was extrude because that's something that is used a lot. So let me show you how that works. Uh, extrude works like this. You can just, you know, make copies. You can also um, select one face, as they call it, and then extrude that. So let me show you how that works. First, you got to understand that there's three ways of select. Well, there's a ton of ways of selecting. So you can focus on these. Uh, let's say points here, the endpoints, and that's what I'm doing now. You can focus on lines, and that's that's these three guys up here kind of decide what you're focusing on and what you're selecting. So if I click on this the second one here, now I can select lines, and I can do anything with those guys. Like I can move them, I can um, extend them, um, anything I'd like really. Like you can make stuff like this, and I can focus on faces. So now I can extrude this face, for instance. Because I have extrude selected, I have faces selected, now I can click here and take that out. And that's how you make anything you want, really. So you can, um, you know, this is like random. It's like, you know, how much am I extruding? You can go inside as well, by the way. You can make an empty box like that. Um, so how do you kind of control that? Well. That's where this guy comes in handy, because if I want to extrude this like a, a specific uh, amount, then I can just type that in, like uh, extrude is E, and then maybe 10. And that will be, you know, uh, 10 meters if you want, or uh, maybe it is, it's far too much. So uh, control Z and extrude uh, two. So that's two meters, or two of these little squares if you want. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, um, all interesting, but um, I don't know. It's not spectacular yet. yet. So this is really the basics. And um, one of the things you can do is insert text. So add text isn't always interesting. It gives you a stand default text that's saying text. Um, boring, but you can totally uh, change that around. So you can go to edit mode and then it will show a cursor and you just can remove that and you can put anything you want. There we go. If I keep shift pressed and I move with my middle mouse button, then I can kind of move around like that. Okay, so a lot of information in this first uh, uh, stream. So I'm going to make this uh, maybe half an hour. So still uh, 15 minutes to go, more or less. And then you got so much information. I'll give you uh, a PDF uh, where all the shortcuts are in because that will save you so much time. It's this guy right here. It's like six pages. Oops, sorry. Six pages of uh, information with uh, shortcuts. Okay, we got our text in here. And now I'm going out of edit mode by pressing tab. And now I got my text up here. Okay, now another thing is the camera. Before I go further with the, with this um, text, uh, the camera is now pointing not at my text. So it's if I would take a screenshot now or I would render, it would render nothing because it's not pointing the right way. So that's, you know, you could spend days trying to figure out how the camera works, by the way. That's 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 a whole other whole other cookie, a whole other ball game. Uh, so um, now it's it's looking like over there where there's nothing, the cross of these two lines, and there's nothing there. So I could either move this guy up here and make sure that it's in the camera's view, which would work. So now it should 
There we go. Should look at that. Or I could move the camera around. And there's a neat trick that you need to know. So if you click on the camera, let's see, like this, like so. And then there's little tabs here on the right. You know, that's really, you, you find that out by, by watching tutorials or just trying stuff out. But tutorials will speed up your learning so much. So if you go to view, there's a, there's one little box. If you uh, click lock to 3D, uh, lock camera to view, then the camera will move with uh, your movements. So uh, that's super easy if you want to put the camera at a certain spot. Let's say I want it at the top pretty much. So then I can go to the top like so. And then I move this guy around. It's gonna take me forever to get there, but here we, there we go. Okay, didn't take me that long. And then you can kind of move it like this. And the, 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 the view that you have now will be the camera's view. So that's, that's a good thing. That speeds up things a lot. Okay, now we back up a bit. So it's, it's right here. Let's make that look like that. Let's make that like that. Let's go back to the view. So I see this is minus three. Let's make this minus three exactly. Uh, rotation Y should be zero. And Z should be one. Eh. Okay, tinker around with it and figure out what, what works best for you. So now we got this. Um, so that's the camera view. So if I now render it, then this is what you see. And it's it's pretty boring because we don't have lights, we don't have color. This is what it does. So it's 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 not really that exciting to be fair. Uh, let's range it around. Questions so far? Just throw them in the chat. Uh, I'm looking at the stream chat mostly. I can quickly. Yeah, you had gelijk, uh, Joshua. I do om om uh, om half five nog een keertje. Want I I was uh, a bit confused in regards to time zones because we have daylight savings now here. I totally forgot about that. So uh, the stream is going to be done again. I'm going to redo this. Uh, at 16.30, so don't worry about it. But, uh, <laughs> so that's my bad, my bad, my bad. So I'm going to totally redo this at, uh, uh, for you guys, 16.30. So it's going to happen again. Let me type that in the chat real fast. Okay, there we go. Okay, no questions so far? Then I'll just keep going. So this is text, this is the camera pointing at it. Um, so let's make it a, a slightly more interesting. Let's add some lighting, let's add some background, let's add some color, let's see how that works. So I must honestly say a, a couple of these things, uh, you might see me struggle because some of these things, it has been a while since I've done this, and there are so many possibilities. And I've kind, kind of searched for things. Uh, so the first thing I do is go back here to view and untag this box here where it says lock camera to view. Uh, so um, that means that I now can move around again without the camera moving with me. So this is fine. The camera is fine. The text is fine. Uh, let's make this this text 3D. Let's start there. So you can do that by uh, clicking here and then uh, go into edit modes. Let's see, maybe I want to change this to a extrude size. I could do that, convert it to mesh. I think that's better. So I'm gonna convert it to a mesh, which means, okay, now I can still go in there and edit and then uh, change the text, like the cursor is there. And if I remove the text, I can put text in there. So I'm go now gonna change this into a mesh, which is like uh, a 3D object instead of text. So that's different because no, you no longer can add text or remove text. This is what it is, but you can do other things with it. So um, right click for that and convert to mesh. And now it's a mesh and now I can do things like extrude for instance. Uh, by the way, one other super tip is at some point you're trying to zoom in and it will no, no longer zoom in. So this is the furthest I can go. So uh, to fix that shift B select um, whatever you're focusing on and it will focus automatically there. 
So that's a problem that a lot of new users have. So like they're up here and they want to zoom in and it doesn't go further like this. Shift B, can, uh, then select whatever you want to focus on and then you will can zoom in further. Okay, like I promised, we can now like extrude. Uh, go into edit mode, extrude. I have to make a selection first. And then you can extrude the letters like so. All right, so now they are 3D pretty much. They got depth. So all these weird lines, they will go away once I hit um, tab to go to object mode back again. Okay. So before we go further, uh, I need to explain something that's up top here, and that's the way you you look at your objects, the way you see your objects. So now we're seeing in this mode. Oh, it's interesting. We have open letters at the end, it seems. Well, so now I'm looking at, at this mode where everything's gray and um, kind of, I don't know, looks a bit like clay to me. I'd say clay. If I hover over it, I'll see what it is officially. Viewport shading, solid mode. Oh, solid mode. Okay, solid mode. So you see the objects are solid. You can also go here to wireframe, and then you see like the lines that kind of make up the the object. That could be handy too. So you can see through it. That's what. That's two. There's another one here uh, that's like material preview mode. So that's you can check out your material, and that's only interesting if you change the color, which will happen over here. We'll go in there in a moment. But let's finish up these guys up here. And then the last one is uh, the render preview. So this is really how it's going to look if you render it, which is going to be super boring, like gray on gray, right? But this is one on one, uh, the same as you will see when you render it. So if you go to render, render image, it's exactly what you will see, gray on gray. Yeah, it's orange because it's selected. So if I click here, then, you know. So you can kind of preview what your uh, objects is gonna, are going to look like when you render. So that's helpful for that. Okay. So that's that. Uh, four minutes to go. Let me, okay, let me make this a little bit more spectacular. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my cursor like here, uh, right click, shift right click, and maybe underneath right there, that's better. And then there I'm going to add, I'm in object mode, I'm going to add a mesh and it's gonna be a plane like that. And I'm going to make it bigger, so I'm going to scale it to, let's say, 20. Is that too much? I think it is. Scale it. Scale it to 10. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now I got a gray background. Uh, hit enter to make sure that it's actually working. So now I still got my stuff up here. And now you see that the downside of uh, this way of looking at your objects because you can not really read what's going on there. So you might go to this guy or this guy. So wireframe or uh, solid, because then you can kind of see your objects better. Okay, so let's uh, change the color of this mesh. So that's kind of tricky. I, I'm i still searching exactly how this works because I always, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still searching for, I know it's over here uh, where uh, it says, you know, okay, these guys are kind of, if you have something selected, like this guy right here, like the, the text, and you want to change that any, in any way, then you go up here, and these are all possibilities that are super important. Um, I could spend another half an hour talking about those or more because there's so much going on here. But one of the things is uh, material properties that you can change there. Another one is world properties. Let's see which one should we use today. Uh, see, I think we should use this guy right here. Material properties. Okay. So let's first let's start with the the, the plane. So I now got this rectangle, which is two D pretty much uh, selected, and I'm going to try to change the color. See if if I get can get that together. So I click new for new material, and I select the base color and. I'm going here to render mode, so to see if I can actually see stuff change. So let's make it red, okay. So this changes the background color. Let's change it to a nice color purple. So that's how that works. And um, now I could do something like, I could give this a color, like Codemaster Lex, I could give that a color, or I could try something different. Now I'm going 
like five steps ahead here in one pace just to throw you guys off but uh it's it looks so much better if i go to uh, camera now this is how it looks and it's still not spectacular but at least we got some color in there right so you got gray on on purple uh, awesome but now i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna create something that's going to be hopefully a little bit more interesting. So I'm selecting uh, the, the the letters. I'm going up here. Let's say I'm, I'm going to wrap this glass up because it's almost half an hour. I'm going, going up here and I'm going to shading. Okay. Now shading is uh, super interesting. You can do so much stuff with that. Um, but uh, now let me show you. I, I Hopefully I can get this together. I have to add shading by clicking add down here. So that's a different add than up here. So now I got the, the shading is down here. And if I click add, and then I could go to shader, and then I could go to emission. And I'm pretty sure I did something wrong. Add a node to the active tree. I think I have to go here and do edit and select everything. And then use a shader. Like I said, this is stuff that, ah, uh, it's not working. Oh, dang. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to show you something, but it's it's not working. I have to figure out why that is. I'm not sure. Like I said, these, some of these things, I never done. Before. Okay, let's go back to the coloring then. Let's go back to layout and keep it simple for now. Um, let's go to object mode again. Okay, let's just give it a color and just change the lighting. That's spectacular as well. I'm going to do the shaders later. Uh, so now this is getting a new material. It's going to be a uh, base color. It's going to be, I don't know, make it bluish but light blue like that, okay. And then I can make it metallic, which is gonna have effect on the lighting that we have. We're gonna, you're gonna see that in a minute. So that's that. So what do we got now? We got blue on purple, uh, still not spectacular, but now I'm going to change the lighting. Where's my light? It's down here, I think. Uh, let's see, let's click here on, where's my light? Do I have a light at all? I think I don't have a light. Okay, let's add a light. Works the same way. Click add, click light, click, hmm, let's see, spot. That's interesting, spot. So it's here at the cursor. I have to move it up. And now it's putting a spotlight on that thing there. Let's make it so. And then I'm going to use these guys to do the rotation. So do I want to rotate that? Yes, like so. And now it's pointing kind of off. So I'm moving a bit fast here. I hope you, you guys can still follow along. <laughs> so the rendering is not telling me anything. Uh, it mean, kind of means, what does it look like now? It's still kind of dark. So you can adjust the power here of the light. So that's not influenced too much. Let's go to a thousand. And that will make it lighter and give you a nice uh, shadow. So that becomes more interesting, right? So now uh, you can move that thing around. And I can even keep it pointed at that thing. Um, there's a trick for that. I totally forgot how that works. Let's see. Uh, uh, lights. Let's go spots. To view view should be somewhere here lock to object there it is so if you go to the i click on the spot and i go here to view and uh, i can keep it locked to an object so i want it locked to object and then i click this uh, what is a dropper and i click on my text so now wherever i move the spot it sh hmm, should keep focused on it it doesn't dang it <laughs> Why is that not working? It should totally work. Okay, well, forget about that then. Uh, I'm gonna change the spot position and then I'm going to manually change it. Oh, well, can't have everything. Okay, so that's better. Going back to camera view. Okay, so how's that? Meh. Okay, I'm gonna move the, move the spot a little bit around. Like maybe change the X value. Hmm. 
Yeah, like that. And then I want you to go here. <clears throat> or there, that's better. That will change the shadow. And then I will change the X, I guess. No, not you. Why is the plane moving? <laughs> uh, totally didn't want to do that. Okay, now it's selected. Okay, this will work. Yeah, that's better. That's what I wanted. Okay, great. So now we got this. Okay, let's see how that renders. Okay, it's not super spectacular, but we got at least something. So now we got this. Uh, we got, you know, we should still, you know, fix some stuff here. This is weird. Uh, it will render better when we actually render it. So, okay, let's go and, and let's stop here and just render this and that will be the end of this class. And I'll do another one like 20 minutes from now. Uh, there's no light in your scene. Okay. Shift eight. Yeah, true. There's, oh, there's a lot of uh, shortcuts, uh, Josh. That's, that's absolutely true. I got a whole list here with uh, shortcuts and I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, for now, I just want to show you how you, uh, once you're done, first I want to make the light a little bit, the size should be a little bit bigger, like so. And then let's see how that renders, that's better. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept this little weird spot up here with the C, I'm not sure what's going on there. Just going to leave it for now. It might be because I ticked metal for that. Uh, so we're going to leave that and this simple thing, we're just going to output. Now, if you output, okay, the, f the first uh, bummer that I had was uh, I outputted it and I couldn't find anywhere where it was. So you have to go up here to, let's say, um, output. That's this guy. It looks a bit like a printer, I think. And then the output folder is right here. So that's TMP on my C drive. So that's where it's going to be put out. So if you... Um, Render animation, that's the second bummer I had, was it's going to render it in separate PNG files as if it were, uh, uh, yeah, like an animation that exists out of little pictures. And they, so if you change this here, you can change it to video, and that's when you render uh, your animation. But for now, I'm just going to render the, the uh, what do you call that? The image. So uh, th this will be fine. So I, I can render the image like this. And that's it. And then I'm going to image and I can save it anywhere now. I can save it anywhere I want. So I can save it in documents. And uh, I could say logo. It's a super boring logo, but you know it's a first you know first half hour of working with this. So there we go. And then you can just open that up. Uh, I'm sure you guys are not seeing this. No. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's that. So that's like an introduction to Blender. Uh, like I said, I have somewhere, I should have gotten that closer. I have the, 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 the shortcut somewhere. Let me see if I can find it real quick so I can share it with you. So on my secondary screen, I'm now scrolling through my Dropbox. Uh, current maybe. Okay. So far, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'm going to take a little break and I'll be back in 20 minutes. Hasta la vista, baby.